there are numerous uh, publications just in the last two years of ACOG really helping to educate physicians, OBs, about the role of midwives. And sometimes that's important to share as well. How do you negotiate a higher salary when RVUs are consistently above the average? Um, again, this is a very long workshop. It's a bit complicated. I did post a resource on ACNM Connect under the business uh, group that could help um, with a link of how, what is an RVU, how is it calculated, and, and how can you um, be remunerated for that, but it's probably not something we could even go into tonight. Uh, but go on ACNM Connect uh, under the business group. Do I have to wait for an annual review? No, you don't. <clears throat> what do I do with more shifts added onto the weekly schedule when someone else is out on PTO and I don't get compensated for it? This is the question about uh, early on in the slides where you saw that midwives on average are working 11 hours more um, per work week. And so, again, it, it always goes back to data tracking for a period of time, not just for you, but for your peers, and being comfortable going together as a whole um, and talking about it. They're not going to fire all six midwives at the same time uh, it, unless they're going to end the practice, which, remember, there's always the what-if question. But data will typically drive reasonable decisions if you're being reasonable in the approach. And if there was no discussion of overtime compensation in your contract, you're really at a disadvantage because you didn't talk about it when you said yes to the job. That doesn't mean it can't be talked about, but it's going to have to be driven on data now. So that's your responsibility. What's a fair salary for per diem or locum tenon short placement? Um, right now, it appears that locum tenons are making anywhere between $110 to $150 an hour for short-term placement, which is typically not over nine months. Not, not nine months. Um, six months. Uh, most um, credentialing panels will allow a locum tenon to come in of any health provider role and bill under that person's name if they're on a leave of absence. So there's been a lot of discussion again on ACNM Connect about what do you get if you're being, if you need overtime or, or per diem. Uh, I would say for somebody that's not locum tenon but doing per diem work for a midwife, it's, it's sitting around um, the high 50s to the high 70s per hour. So these are not commitments like a locum tenon agency would put you in. Uh, typically per diems also have um, established credentials if they're doing hospital births, they have malpractice coverage, things that aren't being paid for by the locum tenon agency. So there is a difference uh, between those two roles. So um, what I want to do now is see if I can get out of this main screen. And I would love to hear some questions from you um, that I'll try to manage uh, by you typing them in. If you want to try using your audio, that's okay. Um, we have fascinating. It says we have 35 participants on and 100 people registered, so it's probably okay if you want to turn your mic or your video on. Or you can type. Any thoughts or questions? Areas that you want to dive into? I, and this is from Mary Collier. In a region that is OBGYN heavy, I have heard some CNMs having an offer pulled just for countering an offer. You know, I would say, Mary, the first thing to do is to know if that's fact or fiction. Um, a, a counter offer doesn't have to be outlandish. It can be reasonable. And sometimes it's education. Um, 
especially private practices that don't have HR companies like hospitals hiring midwives that have access to databases about salaries, uh, which HR departments do look into. I, private practices probably don't have that kind of insight. So it, it, I think it depends on the scenario, uh, but it's a great question and one that would take some, some searching. Are you on, Leslie? Uh, let's go to Lisa. We don't have a birth center in South Dakota. What are the best ways to find competitive salaries when there's no historical data? Actually, you do have data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Uh, they give regional data, and that regional data should be of some use. Uh, and you're going to find some variances, but uh, that's a starting place. Uh, the other is knowing that ACNM salary survey to today, which was the Medscape data, right? And those are seven years apart, six years apart in analyses. That CNM salary, uh, and those would not have been students, right? Typically, is sitting at about 100,000. Uh, so you can go up and down from there. And it's also relative to whether you're starting something from the ground up uh, and whether you're willing to have discussions as, as the patient numbers move up, which is typically how private practices happen. I can tell you when my husband started in a law practice uh, when he was with some partners, he took half the salary uh, of what they made and then had a percentage of his revenue generated, and he ended up making more than they did. So it doesn't have to be a negative. It's all about how you think about it. Hey, Leslie, jump in here anytime um, as well. From Deandra, what is the typical time you need to be practicing to be a locum, and do you see this trending more? I absolutely know it's growing. I have a personal experience that it's growing, and it's growing because we need more midwives in areas where um, it's working and life happens, right? People have babies, people have surgery, uh, people relocate uh, with, with partners moving. It's not because of salary negotiations. I, I don't think that's true at all. How do you recommend dealing with an organization that wants to pay all med midwives the same? Uh, this makes me hesitant to bring up the discussion, discussion of salary. Well, that's really sad. Um, I don't personally believe in that. And, and of all the jobs I've hired, I've never uh, bought into that philosophy. There needs to be recognition of maturity in whatever profession you're in. Um, and I would take all my buddies out uh, for a beverage and just start the conversation. You may not come to an answer right away. But again, if you're in a group practice, doing this on your own is, is going to undermine somebody's gonna feel frustrated or upset. So um, it's a conversation that has to start, in my opinion, as, as a collective. From Sarah, we, may, we emailed briefly about renegotiating a salary for a current job. You mentioned finding data about CRNAs and NPs. Ah, Sarah, you might've come on after we started. That's all at the very beginning of this presentation. Um, so we will have this posted up on our website and you'll find the data on uh, those salaries uh, and important information when it's posted. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, the midwifery group I'm considering joining when I graduate only brings midwives on as independent contractors. Isn't that clever? Well, I still have negotiating power since I won't be getting any benefits. Well, that may be what you need to go in saying, which is, first of all, help me understand, right? You're asking a question, how do all employees come into this business? Tell me a little bit about the financial stability of the business. Can you help me understand why there aren't benefits now and may there be benefits later? And if you can't pay benefits, we know that's pretty steep today, right? Then would you be willing to pay for? And then, Megan, you begin to think about what could be something, again, any new grad, I urge you to stay in that job for a year 
uh, maybe um, you say in a year we're going to talk about this again. <laughs>